October 17th is the 15th anniversary of the Loma Prieta earthquake. Centered within five miles of where you are now, this earthquake lasted for 15 seconds and measured 7.1 on the Richter scale. People who were in Santa Cruz County in the San Francisco Bay Area at that time will never forget what they were doing when the ground started shaking. I was driving on Mount Hermon Road near Scotts Valley when my truck started bouncing all over the place. At first I thought my wheels were coming off, but when I saw the dust rising from the landslides I realized we were having an earthquake. In the days that followed, the county's emergency services were taxed to the limit as they tried to respond to what was clearly a disaster of major scale. When the losses were totaled, Loma Prieta earthquake caused 63 deaths, 3,757 injuries, and over $6 billion in property damage. Loma Prieta, Northridge, Paso Robles, and the shakers that have occurred this week in Parkfield are reminders that earthquakes are part of the environment in California. The question is never if a large damaging quake will occur, but when. Additionally, earthquakes stretch emergency services to the limit. Could be days before you reach, receive help after a large event like Loma Prieta. I encourage you to pick up one of the earthquake pamphlets here and follow the checklist to get your home and family ready for the next big shake. Also, learn about community emergency response teams and what you and your neighbors can do to help each other during disasters. Another earthquake is going to happen, but by taking the proper step to prepare, we can be ready for it when it does. Thank you and thanks for your efforts to improve safety for you and your family. On the evening of October 17, 1989, the second deadliest earthquake in U.S. history ripped through Northern California. At 5.04 that evening, two geological plates broke loose deep underground, sending shockwaves radiating to the Earth's surface. That momentary fracture released energy that rocked communities from the Oregon border to Southern California. But the epicenter, the point where the impact hit hardest, was just eight miles north of Aptos, California. It was Tuesday, warm Indian summer day. As Action News 8 at 5 went on the air, our attention and the nation's focused north on San Francisco in the World Series. The Giants and A's, the Giants are down two games to nothing. And we're going to go to Dennis Lennon, the guy over my shoulder right now, with a live report from Candlestick Park. Dennis, what's up? Uh, lots up, Graham. First of all, I apologize for wearing green. I know you're a big Giants fan. That's what happens when you don't pack your own clothes. Uh, there are a lot of A's fans here at Candlestick. We're gonna... But in the space of 15 seconds, the earth and our attention shifted. Second base, so the Oakland A's take... Take... I'll tell you what, we're having a hurry up. The jarring force of the quake knocked out electrical power over a wide area and knocked Action News 8 off the air for two minutes. Okay, go ahead, Dave. I'm Dave Gonzalez, live in the newsroom here at Action News 8. As you probably know, we just experienced a major quake here on the Central Coast, and we're still trying to get things together here ourselves. We understand that there is some damage in the Santa Cruz area, and just how bad that is, we're not really sure yet. As we say, the, uh, the quake struck just a few minutes ago, and it is, let's see, it's almost uh, 10 minutes after. Struck at about five minutes after five o'clock, and put us off the air here just temporarily. We're not sure, we're trying to get, uh, find out right now exactly how strong the quake was and find out its epicenter. We have been scrambling around. Excuse me if I'm just a little bit out of breath. But uh, the quake happened uh, just a few minutes ago. And as I said, somewhere along the central coast, we understand the only report we have so far is that there is some structural damage to a building uh, in the Santa Cruz area. And the reason we know that is because it is our own Santa Cruz Bureau there where... Uh, it was a devastating earthquake. The enormity of the disaster was evident minutes later in the stunned looks of people wandering dazed through the streets. The Pacific Garden Mall in Santa Cruz seemed to be a war zone. from San Francisco all the way down here. People, move away, wait! We saw it. There's a lot.
lots of rubble everywhere. Everybody, we need to leave now. Where's the fire? Just all over the place. We've got really house fires down. and problems down at the wharf, problems at the boardwalk and stuff like that. <laughs> The country watched the Bay Area. We watched our local communities fighting their own devastation. Uh, Ma'am, I know about the earthquake. Do you have an emergency? Yes, the whole house fell down by the car. Okay. Seneca, I don't know whether you received the report. There's a large column of black smoke. Dizzy Center. Well, we got some gas coming out of a pipeline. coming out of right exactly behind that house. What did you see? I saw nothing. All we felt was the earth and the house just moving. And then we, I came outside and everybody was showing fire. There's a gas line going and everything. And then we left. I mean, <laughs> how's your house doing? <laughs> this is shambles. This is unlivable. With the destruction spread over such a wide area, you helped us tell the story. A San Francisco tourist videotaped this dramatic and deadly moment when a car drove off the broken edge of the Bay Bridge. Gosh! And Action News 8 opened its phone lines. Viewers shared terrifying tales. I was in Hollister at 5 o'clock when the quake hit, working out a gymnasium there called Arvellas. The entire building, I understand the front side of it, um, is gone now, but when we were inside, we felt the plates actually underneath the floor moving in the base or foundation. We went charging out the front door. Uh, bricks started flying and steel girders came down. The glass blasted out inward and outward. Uh, people were screaming in the streets, of course. Um, it was a short time before the police arrived, but we did go around the back side to get someone out we thought was trapped inside the building. Uh, fortunately, no one was injured, but the two-story structure is pretty much gone in the front side, and uh, things were buried. There are two or three cars out the front that can't be really distinguished. They're covered under bricks, and, and things are pretty much a mess. Is this the building that uh, is next to the J.C. Penney store in Hollister? I heard that it was reported that J.C. Penney was destroyed. It's actually Ravella's Gym, which is right adjacent to that on 4th Right, and that's the building you were in at, at the time. Uh -huh. That must have been a harrowing experience. In Santa Cruz, with National Guardsmen patrolling the streets, stunned residents looked on in disbelief. The heart of the city, the Pacific Garden Mall, lay in ruins. Ford's department store, gone. 75-year-old Catherine Tremaine died there under the debris. And gone, too, the historic Cooper House with its outdoor cafe, once a favorite downtown meeting place. And it would be a long time before Shockley's Jewelers would open again. Somebody in there. Somebody in there. But the human toll was most apparent in the faces of worried friends waiting outside the Santa Cruz Coffee Roasting Company. A brick wall from Bookshop Santa Cruz fell through the roof there. The body of 21-year-old Sean McCormick had been pulled from the rubble immediately after the quake. Young Robin Ortiz was still missing, and friends feared she might be buried alive. But the unstable walls prevented authorities from searching, and it would be some time before worried friends knew whether she was alive or dead. And the anguish was mirrored in Watsonville, where Elita Ortega died as the brick awning over the Bakerite Bakery crumbled to the ground. Elsewhere, crushed cars lay under flattened roofs, and homes, twisted and terribly askew, would never be home again. Some roads were barely passable, others not at all. The Pajaro Bridge was closed. There were many other stories of damaged buildings and narrow escapes, as John Lobertini reported. It was transportation. The jarring action of the earthquake, now placed at 7.1 on the Richter scale, closed dozens of roads, including two major routes into and out of Santa Cruz County. In Watsonville, Highway 1 over Harkins Slough dropped 30 feet to the ground below. A flattened ribbon of highway, support columns once underneath, now poking surrealistically up through the pavement. And on Highway 17, north of Scotts Valley, hundreds of tons of rocks and dirt buried the road at Laurel Curve. It was a commuter's nightmare. 
CHP officers limited Highway 17 access to carpoolers. Drivers alone were turned back. This will continue daily on a seven day a week basis for the next, who knows, until we get this situation under control up there. The situation would not be under control for some time. It would take weeks for workers to clear the highway. Drivers forced to detour through miles of winding mountain roads faced nightmare commutes, creeping along foot by foot for hours. And Mother Nature was not through yet. With cracks from the jarring timbler tearing across mountain hillsides, the rain, normally a welcome sight following months of dry skies, seemed now like a cruel joke. John Libertini followed the foul weather into the hills. It couldn't have come at a worse time, heavy rain socking the steep and already fragile Santa Cruz Mountains. You had the, the chimney almost come through the roof. You can't see it over there from here, but I was up at 5.30 last night patching the, the roof up, slightly leaking. Dave and Jennifer Deming survived Tuesday's earthquake. The chimney's damaged and the roof has a hole, but now the rains and this fissure are tugging at the foundation of their home. They cleared us to be in here, you know, they said that that was it, but that fissure's what has us nervous because it hits live and it runs behind our neighbor's house and up behind the water tanks over there. By midday, the downpour had become hard and steady. Emergency vehicles are standing by in case this disaster worsens. But for Paul Ellis, just down the street, it can't get much worse. Do you want to use this? No. Do you have something? Yeah, but I'm not going to use it. Two of his homes crumbled under the Tembler's force, just like another did seven years ago in the Love Creek mudslides. An 82. You've got to wonder uh, what you're doing. <laughs> I'm moving to Oregon next time. <laughs> I'm going to live in my motor home until I get that uh, uh, squared away. <sighs> Slippery. For the victims of this disaster, the preoccupation of pulling their lives back together has kept them from thinking about this ordeal, but inevitably the realization sets in. What I think you? it hit me last night because he went down the hill, he had to get some things that were left at the airport when he rushed in so fast, and the electricity went out and it was getting dark, and I got a call from my doctor, I had a little medical problem with my pregnancy, and that was just like, it. so I sat here in the dark holding my kids crying for a while. In the flatlands of Watsonville, there was at least a break from the rain as a military airlift dropped off desperately needed supplies. Okay, uh, Navy helicopters inbound. The winds are out of the southwest at about five, and uh, your car is back The skies cleared in Watsonville this morning long enough to allow three Navy helicopters time to land. They're delivering the first of 120 pallets of bottled water and baby food. Volunteers stand by to help load the boxes by forklift into trucks, which will distribute the supplies in the area. The supplies a very welcome sight. It was really beautiful. It just, it gave, you know, it made you feel really good inside to see something, you know, so big and tremendous flying in, you know, with supplies to help all these people. It was a really good feeling. The fear was natural. Experts say a disaster is much like a war. And as in a war, post-traumatic stress is not only normal, but a healthy response to a terrible situation. There is a delayed effect where people are falling apart and they don't understand why. And what has happened is that they've spent their resources, and a lot of people haven't taken care of themselves. They haven't done the self-nurturance. Everyone who wrote out the quake suffered some stress. The irritability has been building up. And it just seems like the small molehills and the things that you deal with on a daily basis, and I always have dealt with on a daily basis, have now magnified. Carol sought help through a church counseling group, and Santa Cruz County has established Project COPE for anyone feeling anxiety. Therapists warn stress isn't reserved for adults. In fact, the quake may have been hardest on young children who never before knew that the earth could move. Do you, do you like to be by yourself? No, I like to be a few guys instead of Big giant one. Yeah, what would you do? I don't know. Would you run into mommy and daddy where we were? No. No? No. Oh. By yourself? 
kids will be becoming very clinging and dependent on, on the parents. And a lot of times they don't want them to leave their presence. They're needing a, an assurance, a constant reassurance that things are okay. They will often repeat the same question 15 or 20 times. Again, just trying to establish with mom or dad that things are going to be fine. Everything you know, that moves or any noise, she wants to know what's bad. Or, you know, she's saying, when's the next earthquake going to be? Well, we talk about it a lot. She, she likes to talk about it. And we just tell her that, you know, to get in the doorway or, you know, try to let her know what to do because she, she always says, well, what, if it happens, what are we going to do? Without exception, that is a question we should all be asking ourselves. What are we going to do when the next one hits? Being prepared is one way to feel better about living on a fault line. And with that in mind, we offer some important tips for earthquake survival. Being prepared is fairly easy. The experts say you may have to live on your own for up to three days, so keep enough food and water on hand for at least 72 hours. You'll need a battery-operated radio or television to know what's happening, and always have a supply of fresh batteries on hand. A first aid kit, flashlights, and blankets are also important, along with a small supply of cash. Banks and electronic teller machines may not work if the power is out. And no electricity means that gas stations won't pump. Try not to leave your gas tank less than half full. Around the house, you should know where your electrical fuse box is and how to turn the power off. And the same goes for gas and water. The gas valve is especially important since leaking gas can cause a fire. And take time to anchor furniture to the walls. Bookshelves and other tall things can topple over when the shaking begins. All of these are simple things to do now before they're needed and they'll make so much difference later. In Santa Cruz, the people decided long ago to preserve the Cooper House, the old courthouse building on the mall. But now, it too is gone, along with its many shops and restaurants. But there is still hope for the future, and much of that lies in the way we all pulled together when the Earth tried to pull us apart. If ever there was a time our communities were tested, the last days of October were it. The Tembler that would come to be known as the Loma Prieta earthquake unleashed an awesome force, destroying lives, tearing apart homes, and threatening us one and all. But adversity seemed to bring us closer as well. Facing something so big made us care a little more, made us make the extra effort for those around us. Citizens ignored their own safety and searched through the rubble for others. Volunteers put aside their own concerns to help those more in need. And there were so many other generous gestures. Like the mariachis who played for homeless families living in a Watsonville shelter. And the tons of clothing, so much donated, the relief groups had a hard time keeping up. And the Harbor High kids who gave up their homecoming plans and raised money for the relief effort instead. One of those gestures was a benefit concert in Santa Cruz by rock legends Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Look around me, I can see my life before me, running rings around the way it used to be. In the end, the Loma Prieta earthquake will become what we recall of it. Long after the homes are rebuilt and the bridges and highways repaired, the spirit of giving will remain as the symbol of the earthquake of 89. Look around me, I can see my life before me, running rings around the way it used to be. And it was the opinion of me and David and Stephen that we would love to come to Santa Cruz and help out in any way we could. And there's so much time to make up everywhere you turn. It's time that we come together and remember, we're not only mourning a loss, but celebrating the fact that we're all alive, that we will rebuild, and that it's going to be OK again. When you were young, you questioned all the answers. Did you and we all the dancers in that We want people to realize that there are people outside of Santa Cruz that know and care very much what goes on here. So much time to make up everywhere you turn. 
It's wonderful to see so many people back on Pacific Avenue for a good time. And when I was talking with the mayor uh, the other day, she uh, put it just right when she said that the spirit is in the people. It's not in the old buildings that you're losing, and it's not in whatever is going to replace those old buildings. The spirit is in the people, and we're trying to keep that spirit alive. Let the water come and dance.